Hello and welcome back to Syndicate Stats. With lots of the woes of Maribor behind us, we're heading to Fort William, a classic venue that hosted some of the greatest downhill racing in history. Today we've been treated to some of Scotland's traditional weather, making standing trackside pretty grim. But the track does hold up pretty well in the rain, making it grippier, but no less rocky, rough or tough. This weekend, Greg still needs to finish in the top 60 to qualify, but Luca and Loris are safe, being protected riders. Now, Greg finished in ninth position today, which is a pretty damn good result, but we're talking about a seven-time Fort William winner here. So we're gonna go through his run pretty closely, comparing him to the fastest man of the day, Loris Vergier. As you can see in the graph, Greg being the black line and Loris being the green. Greg was seventh at the first split, 14th in the second sector. Not a bad position, but he lost a lot of time to Loris, over five seconds, which is definitely a section he can work on for tomorrow. On to the third sector, which includes the new wooded section. And you can see here, he didn't lose as much time, but lost a lot of positions. In the fourth sector, times were tighter. Greg trailed behind Loris by almost a second. But once again, he lost a lot of positions, sitting in 20th. In the final sector, you can see he was pretty close with Loris, Rhys Wilson and Bernard Kerr, but still lost 0.56 to slowest qualifier and sector champion, Matt Walker. Greg has a few sectors to look at for tomorrow, and maybe a run following Loris. And Loris, the fastest man down the hill today, with an average speed of 39.766. Loris started off with a third position in the top sector, nearly half a second between him and first place Damery, which is a sector he can work on for tomorrow's race. But it's the second sector that put a dent in the competition. He was two seconds faster than Amory of Pierron, giving him a healthy lead of 1.67 seconds by the second split. In the third sector, which features the new woods, he was just a fraction slower than Amory. But it was in the fourth sector, Loris started to lose some momentum. Here he was in sixth position, and 0.5 behind sector champion, Dakota Norton, and 0.26 behind nearest competitor, Amory Pierron. But it's the final sector Loris will be looking at working on tomorrow, losing a whole second to Matt Walker, and 0.75 to Amory. In the end, he was the fastest, but not by much, just 0.62 of a second, He'd ended up using some of that time he'd banked earlier in Sector 2. He'll be looking for a few more seconds tomorrow. Finally, this brings us on to Lucas Shaw, a 15th position for him today. With a pretty solid bottom section, we're gonna take a closer look at his top three splits. Now, for each of these sections, we're gonna work out how much time he needs to make up to give him a top 10 result in each sector, and then work out from there where he would have finished with these times. In the first section, Luca was 18th, and to match the time of 10th place, he would need to make up a quarter of a second in the first sector. In the second sector, he lost 6.7 to Loris, fastest in this section. And for him to make the top 10, he'd need to shave off 2.7 seconds to match the time of 10th place. In the third sector was where he lost a lot of positions, but not too much time, 2.6 back on the sector winner. And this would have been 1.29 seconds to 10th place to Jacob Dixon. Luca then went on to finish seventh in the fourth sector and sixth in the final, finishing up with a 10 second deficit Let's see how he would have finished up with the top 10 times. If we add these times together, we get 4.235 seconds. And now we can take that number away from Luca's time. He would have been sitting in sixth place, just one spot off the podium. And that finishes our stats off for today. Check back soon for our finals video.